Okay, we're going to now uh, talk about the uh, gas volume factor or the gas formation volume factor. Um, and the first thing is uh, to see how, in a sense, one uh, can derive this relation, the general relation for the gas formation volume factor based on a simplifying assumption of uh, ideal gas behavior. Um, it's just a little bit of exercising your skills with uh, the ideal gas law, which everybody learned in high school, but now we actually can, can use it for, for something um, uh, practical in engineering. And then uh, once you've done that, once you've expressed, come up with an expression for the gas formation volume factor based on the ideal gas law, um, I'm going to ask you that you calculate that formation volume factor that uh, for gas um, and, and uh, use a, a, a number of different units that are uh, found in the industry, strange units. So you'll have a little bit of exercise on unit conversion and, and representation of a quantity in different units where the, the quantity uh, looks very different according to which units are used. So, so the starting point is that we're going to make an assumption here that um, uh, you can use the ideal gas law. Of course, we will abandon this assumption shortly. Uh, when we start talking about real gases. But this is, uh, for the time being, this is uh, what we'll use. And as you know, that equation for the ideal gas law is pressure times volume is equal to the number of moles times the universal ga gas constant times temperature. And I just want to remind you that this temperature is not the same temperature we've been talking about, 15.56 degrees C or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature is in absolute units. Um, which, depending on which system you're using, is either Kelvin or degrees Rankine. So do not put 15.56 or 60 into this equation. It will be very, very wrong by a lot. And if you do that, particularly now that you've been warned or reminded not to do that, if you did that on a problem or a quiz or, a, or a, certainly an exam, then you probably should be failed out of the entire engineering program and, and forced to become a, you know, a dentist or something, you know, who's going to cause pain anyway. So uh, just don't do it. I mean, that's like, okay, engineering 101. So use absolute units. And likewise, uh, because uh, sometimes in our odd industry, we, we use pressure with gauge or absolute. So there's now also two kinds of pressure units. You also want to just be aware that this should also be absolute pressure. Something like PSIA. Um, in other words, not gauge pressure. or you know, kilopascal or whatever you want to use, bar. But the point is that behind these is this parenthesis that it's an absolute pressure and not a gauge pressure. So this is a uh, uh, assumption one. And the second assumption is that what we start with, a volume of gas at pressure and temperature, is associated with a certain number of moles. And we're going to make the assumption that when we bring this r gas at pressure and temperature to the surface, that it all remains surface gas. It doesn't precipitate out water, which it always will do, maybe a half percent or 2%. But we're going to neglect that. We're going to ignore that. 
sometimes it precipitates out oil, which is really nice. Up to 10, 15 mole percent becomes oil. We're going to ignore that. So the assumption is that when we bring it to surface conditions, that <clears throat> these moles and these moles are equal. This is an assumption, too. Okay? And during this course, we're going to throw away those assumptions, and we're going to come up with expressions for BG that <clears throat> don't assume ideal gas law, that don't assume all of the reservoir gas becomes surface gas. Okay? But right now, in this hour, I'm going to let you make these two simplifying assumptions. And when you do that, you guys should be able to come up with an expression, a direct expression for BG. <clears throat> okay? In terms of the pressure and temperature here, and in terms of the pressure and temperature here. Now you'll do that quickly, and so basically I want you to derive that now. Um, this computer's hard disks lets me. So you're going to do that. That is our class quiz. It's not going to be graded, but this is for you to do. And then after you've done that, we're going to do some example calculations with that equation. <coughs> And while you're doing the derivation, I'm going to give you the, the pressures and temperatures and everything and the units I want you to calculate BG with. Okay? So that's, that's what we're going to do. Any questions? You need paper and pencil to begin with. Paper and pencil or pen. Okay?
I probably did. Well, let's see. Um, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is 0 degrees C, so you can check that. So, let's try it again. Temperature in Fahrenheit, minus 32. Divided by 1.8. Is that better? There we go. Thank you. If I can interrupt you just for one second, I'm going to just give you a, a general recommendation engineering practice. <laughs> to get these answers here, in different units there are many different ways to go about that but the general principle you should use is that you should in general try to work with the units that you're most familiar with get the answer in those units then and only then convert do pure units conversion okay it's just a general rule so forget about reservoir barrels and MSCF until the very end. You get the answer in your unit, whatever you're most familiar with. Cubic meters per cubic meter, for example. Get that answer first. You'll have most confidence with that answer. Then you can do the final conversions of units. Okay? Just a suggestion.
Same value of what? For metrics, because as high system and for what you uh, can what be the same value? Like the, the formation will factor for gas in CI system and field system. Um, sometimes it is the same. The field system has two sets of units here. It's cubic feet per standard cubic feet. That, like uh, in this case. well, yeah, then, then they would be the same, B but not for the field unit uh, reservoir barrel per MCF, that, then it would be different. Okay. So sometimes SI unit can be, in a ratio, can be the same as the field yeah, unit yeah, ratio. Well, but ratios are not the same if you use different units. You have to be very careful thinking. Yeah, but if you use units from our system for one equation, units for another, units for another system, <coughs> for another equation, which equally can be converted with the same ratio. So. In general, that's the case. But we use a lot of strange ratios in petroleum, and the units are sometimes strange. So it's, but uh, yeah, you will come up with some quantities that are the same.
Okay, so I'm sure most of you, uh, hopefully all of you, have come up with that relatively simple expression for the BG. It's, it's not something we'll use other than for um, order of magnitude calculations because it, you know, we'll find out that it's only an approximation. But it does give the main um, uh, variable dependencies. So BG is inversely proportional to pressure. That's a fact. And um, and it's it's uh, proportional to the temperature, but in absolute units. So if it goes from uh, you know 50 degrees C to 100 degrees C, it's not a factor of two change because it's 50 plus 273 to 100 plus 273. So it's it it has a dependence on temperature, but in terms of absolute units. Whereas pressure, it's inversely proportional to pressure. So that's the expression. Did anybody not get this? So you'll, you may find in some books, some textbooks, it written in this way, but probably not. Probably the book is written either in field units and in a few occasions, SI units. And instead of carrying around this PSC over TSC term, they will likely go through this operation and do that calculation for you once and simply give you a constant here. So most of the books will give you this constant. 0.0283 or 0.08, yeah. But implicit in that is the fact that you have to use temperature now in degrees Rankine and pressure in PSIA. So that equation only applies to a certain set of units, whereas this is a generic general equation. As long as you're consistent with the units, you can use any units you like. Here, when you start getting this constant, you have to be careful. Okay? And the unit with these will be in cubic meters per standard cubic meter. And the BG here will be cubic feet for standard cubic feet. And in fact, the magnitude of those two values will be identical, OK? Because a cubic meter per cubic meter is the same as a cubic feet per cubic feet, OK? So what did you get for this number in SI units here? What, did, what is the same here? What did we get for this number? I'd like you to carry at least three, maybe four significant digits. Point oh, was that seven? Point oh, eleven seven. One oh, I'm just going to write down. I need to get three of the same. Oh, one one. Oh, one one seven. Oh, one one seven. Did anybody else get? Oh, one one seven. Okay. So I generally look for three, <laughs> three people with the same number. Then I start believing it. Okay. So this is point oh one one seven. Yep. Okay. And it's the same here. Okay.
And the little bg is simply the inverse of that. So what do we get for that? Something close to 100. 85 minus 59. Okay, 89, 85, 89. 85, 85 59. 85, 59. Right. Okay, that's a little different. Okay, so about that. And that would have units of standard cubic meter per cubic meter. And what that says is that if you take one cubic meter of gas out of this reservoir, down in the reservoir conditions, it will translate into about 85 cubic meters at standard conditions. Okay? Sometimes this is referred to as an expansion factor. For gases, it's always going to be expanding. Okay? Even if you condense out water, you condense out oil, which, you know, we're getting these multiple products that drove the oil volume to shrink. You'll never compensate for the expansion of gas due to condensation of some liquid at the surface. So basically, the BG value will always be less than one. Okay? Usually a lot less than one. And often less, much less than one. Because you have this inverse proportionality to pressure. You know, volume increases as, you know, uh, rapidly as pressure gets lower. And therefore, BG will always be typically much greater than one. In general, gas will expand from reservoir conditions to surface conditions. It'll expand. That little BG factor will typically be in the range from 100 to 300 throughout the world. Okay? That's just for you to keep in mind. So in general, it's on the range of 100 to 300. Well, 85 is a little bit less than 100, but not too many reservoirs are that low pressure. You know, if the pressure gets lower, then that number gets smaller. But in general, certainly in the North Sea, this is the case, and in most of the world as well. So the units here for field units is the same numerical value because if we take standard cubic feet per cubic feet like this, then we get the same numerical value. Did everybody get this? Okay. <coughs> so the expansion of gas is typically from reservoir conditions to surface conditions on the order of magnitude 100 to 300 times. Okay? The degree of shrinkage for oils was what? Ranging typically from 1.2 BO to 2.5. You know, you have extremes lower and higher than that, but in general 1.2 to 2.5 is the range of the initial oil formation volume factor for 90% of the reservoirs in the world. Okay. So now we've got this last exercise, which is the, the terrible units of reservoir barrel per thousand st standard cubic feet. Okay. So what we want is BG in reservoir barrel per thousand standard cubic feet. I'm going to show you how I would go about doing the calculation, um, but you may have done it differently and then you can share with me how you did it. 
but uh, if we start with with this value here in cubic meters per standard cubic meter it might because it has the same numerical value as cubic feet per standard cubic feet that's probably the easiest one to start with so I'll start with this 0 0.0117 cubic feet per standard cubic feet I want to convert the cubic feet to barrel first and then we go up and look at the units and that's this is the conversion that we need to use about 5.6 cubic feet in a barrel um, it's about six um, Yeah, we'll come back to that in a bit, but that's, uh, well, yeah, let's just use that number first. So 5.6147 uh, so we want the cubic feet to cancel like that. This is the same as multiplying by one, right? I mean, they're the same thing. This is essentially one. So we're not doing anything wrong here. But what we can now do is we can cancel these guys here, the cubic feet, go away. Okay, and a barrel and an RB are the same thing in terms of unit, right? RB just means reservoir barrel, so it's so so the unit is as least correct. So this this thing here is is actually a barrel. Okay. Now we have to get the thousand standard cubic feet here instead of standard cubic feet. So there we just use that there are a thousand standard cubic feet per MSCF and again this quantity I wrote up here for you so if you take the one to the other side you get that that ratio is again just essentially like multiplying by one now we can get rid of this standard cubic feet with that standard cubic feet and what we're left with is barrels per thousand or MCF we typically call this MCF sometimes it's written that way as well but um, thousand standard cubic feet so this is this is the way I would convert it it doesn't mean you have to do it this way but um, anybody else have a more elegant way you want Let's first get an answer and see if we get the same same number that you did. If somebody's faster than I cut my finger yesterday, so I'm not very fast here. Point oh oh no point oh one one seven divided by five point six one four six times a thousand. So 2.08 reservoir barrels. Is that what everybody else got? Okay. Yeah. And if you didn't get this number, then either you're wrong or I'm wrong. Or we're both wrong. So, okay. But it sounds like there's enough people. Now you see why we use this unit. Because it gives a number, you know, we're more familiar with. We're more familiar with 2 than 0.0117, okay? That's, that's the reason they use, one of the reasons they use this unit sometimes. Reservoir barrels per thousand standard cubic feet. Any questions about this exercise? Okay.
All right. And we'll uh, take a break and then uh,